This class is concerned with consumerism and ethical responsibility. Let's start by talking about the meaning of consumer ethics. Ethics can be defined as the study of morality, uh, standards that determine what is right and what is wrong, what's good and what's evil, what's helpful or harmful, what's acceptable or unacceptable. Ethics is, is really the theory of what is right and wrong. The morality is the practice of right and wrong. Morality is is doing something. It's, it's performing an action which may be judged to be right or be judged to be wrong. But it's judged as right or wrong according to the theory. That's ethics. So ethics and morality are different. Morality is the practical part. What is right and what is wrong. It's, it's what we do. Whereas ethics is how we measure whether something is right or wrong. So it's concerned with situations where there is actual or potential harm to any individual or group from a particular course of action. So ethics is really concerned about looking at actual or potential harm. Now we can look at all of this in the context of let's say a company selling a product or the government aiming to change its policy regarding some social issue or towards some economic issue. So we could look at the, the practicality of a company pursuing a certain line of production or behaving in a certain way or the government behaving in a certain way. Their action is the morality of the company, the morality of the government and we measure whether it's right or wrong by looking at ethics, the theory of morality. Now let's look at consumerism and we'll just get some ideas about uh, how this works out in practice. Now consumerism arises because of a failure of business in the exchange relationship to meet and respond to the legitimate demands of its customer. Customers have expectations about products, that the products are safe to use, that the products live up to what is said about the product. So the company will issue, let's say, marketing statements about the product and customers will expect the product to meet those standards. They expect the product to do or be what it says it is. So when it doesn't, when there is an issue of customers buying a product and clearly the product does not live up to the statements about it, then there are issues and the customer will want to seek some redress for, for compensation for, for, for what's happened. They want their money back or they want to be compensated for any damage that the product may have caused. So there are ethical perspectives that we need to look at to try and judge whether um, uh, companies behave ethically or not, or whether the government behaves ethically or not. So there are different ethical perspectives. One of the most popular in terms of academic study is what's known as utilitarianism. The utilitarian perspective is very important. This goes back to England in the mid 1800s up to the late, probably up to, up, up to the late 1800s and was championed by very famous philosophers like John Stuart Mill and Jeremy Bentham and, and many others. Uh, we're going to look at it in a little more detail later but for the moment the utilitarian perspective suggests that uh, something is judged to be good when the greatest number of people benefit from that product or that that policy if it if it's a government policy the greatest number when the greatest number benefit it's deemed to be good 
course there are issues here which uh, again we'll touch upon later but uh, the big issue is how do we measure what is good well we tend to measure what's good subjectively we measure it in our heads so it is subjective and that means it's very difficult to measure so the outcome of a policy if the outcome of a policy is good then we could simply agree that it's good but we can't actually measure it we don't get a figure and say it's four and a half or 25 or whatever we don't get figures we just get an understanding that the outcome was good and that's one of the drawbacks of utilitarianism it, it can't be measured we also have ideas about justice and fairness and again as I said we'll talk about these again in a few moments but for for a second for, for this moment in time justice and fairness is about the idea that we should be treated fairly we we should be treated um, equally and we should be treated in a way that enables us to um, have justice have fairness so there the policy should be uh, measured in terms of fairness to the individual and we should be treated with justice as I said we'll talk about this again in a few moments we also have theories of personal rights very basic rights uh, the right to enjoy life the right to freedom the right to not be injured or to be hurt by a product or by a company or by a group of other individuals or by society in total by the government so we have a right we have personal rights and these also are relevant in our discussion of consumerism Let's go back and talk about the utilitarian perspective for a few for a few more moments. Um, this takes uh, the greatest good for the greatest number as opposed to concerns of a single individual or enterprise. In other words, utilitarianism is dealing with the greatest good for the greatest number of people and actions by government can be measured as to whether how many people benefit how many people are hurt by the action and how many people benefit and if a very large number benefit and very few are hurt it may be that that policy will be accepted it may be that people will say well no one should be hurt just people should benefit and that perspective could be offered so the utilitarian perspective is it's trying to maximize the the benefits from a policy or from a product or from a certain course of action now justice and fairness well it believes it that impartiality and fairness are the criteria for ethical decision making justice and fairness we should be treated equally we're humans and we shouldn't have discrimination we shouldn't have one group being treated unfairly and another group being treated more preferentially justice would suggest that we all have similar treatment where we're treated with dignity, we're treated with fairness and we shouldn't be dealt uh, with differently. Justice is attained when the benefits of and burdens of society are distributed fairly to stakeholders unless there are clear and defensible reasons for differential treatment. 
So, generally speaking, we should be treated fairly, unless there's a compelling case for not treating people the same. Now, we'd have to imagine situations where that could arise, and uh, there's none spring to mind uh, immediately. But, uh, generally speaking, we treat people fairly, with justice. And we expect the same from other people, and we expect the same from the government. We should treat people with respect, and they should treat us with respect. Personal rights. Well, we have personal rights as individuals. We have a right to enjoy life. We have a, a right to not to be hurt. Uh, we have a right to avoid pain if possible. We shouldn't have uh, be subjected to a policy which will inflict pain upon us. So we have rights ensuring our dignity and our respect and our autonomy. We have rights to be respected. Rights are powerful devices whose main purpose is that of enabling the individual to choose freely whether to, to pursue certain interests or activities and of protecting those choices. So we have a right to certain courses of action, perhaps where to live, uh, our chosen career, what we want to do for, for a living, what do we want to do uh, as a livelihood. We have rights regarding um, uh, expectations about products, that the products will not hurt us or kill us or damage us in some way. So we have personal rights which should be respected. There's also something called justifiable actions. Sometimes we can take action against a company or against a group of individuals and we may be justified in so doing. An action is morally justifiable if and only if a person's rationale for carrying out that action in a given situation is one that person would be willing to have everyone else use in a similar situation. In other words, we will be justified in carrying out an action against the company if, if everyone else felt the same way. If there was universal revulsion regarding the, the policy of a company uh, issuing a product which is dangerous and which uh, has caused people injury or, or whatever. Now if we feel strongly about that, but other people feel strongly about it as well, the action may be justifiable. We want the company to stop making faulty products which are dangerous and which are going to hurt the consumers and stop making claims that the, the product is safe and good when in fact let's say the company knows it's not. So the consumers are justifiable. They're justified in taking certain actions, perhaps exposing the company uh, for issuing the product or, or taking action against the company in some way. Now there is a conflict between ethics and bottom line responsibility. Bottom line responsibility means the essential responsibility. Sometimes companies, uh, well most times companies have um, responsibility to their stakeholders, to their shareholders, to their employees, to their suppliers. So they have responsibility to them and this may conflict with their ethical position. For example, they uh, they want to please their stakeholders and that might mean that they are going to cheat or not be open and honest with their customers because they want to sell more. They need to sell more to make a profit 
to meet shareholders' dividends requirements or to ensure that the suppliers have continued orders or that the workforce will continue to have employment. But there's a trade-off here. The workforce will have continuous employment but the customers are being cheated. They're being, they're being lied to about the product. In fact, there's no clear-cut answer. Um, the examples I've just mentioned sound clear enough, um, but there are issues uh, which there's no clear-cut answer. Um, sometimes the company has an ethical position to its employees. It must try and uh, uh, safeguard their livelihoods, but it, it also means that they they may have to increase the price of the product or not sell the product in certain markets and perhaps deprive customers in certain markets access to the product. Th there are conflicts. Sometimes there's no clear-cut answer. Individuals would have to introspect to answer this. When, when there is a conflict and there's no clear-cut answer, an outcome is still required. So what generally happens is we look into ourselves. We, we solve it by introspection. We look into ourselves. We ask ourselves, what is the right course of action? We look at all of the, the pros and cons, what's for, against, for the policy and against the policy, and, and we try to balance it in our heads and think about it and, and come to a decision. So we do it by introspection. By and large, there is a high correlation between ethical behaviour of the organisation and its prosperity. Uh, this may be an inverse correlation. It may be that the company is cutting back on the quality of the product, saving costs, cutting corners, and trying to sell it at the maximum price. So it's trying to make more profits. It's trying to increase its prosperity, but it's doing so by deteriorating and, and reducing the quality of the product and the experience of the, the customer. So there might be a correlation, perhaps an inverse correlation, between ethical behaviour and the prosperity of the organisation. Consumer rights, well, consumers have a right to safety, as I've been saying right throughout. We have the right to expect that the product is safe and it's not going to hurt us or damage us if we, we purchase it. And we need to be informed about the product. We need to be informed about issues associated with the product, how to use the product properly, how to maximize the benefits from the product. So we have a right to, to know how to use the product properly. We should be able to choose between products. We should be able to choose, at the most basic level, between buying it and not buying it. The most basic choice. But if we choose to buy the, the product, then we should also have the, the right to choose what aspect of the product we're interested in, and perhaps there may be a range of similar products, each addressing slightly different needs, and we've, we have a right to choose. We should, we should be able to select the one that best suits our requirements. We have a right to be heard. When something goes wrong, we should be able to make our opinions known, known to the company or known to the government or known to whoever has affected us. We should be able to go back and, and explain what has happened, explain that we were hurt or damaged in some way by by exposure to the product and we have a right to be heard. Uh, we have a right to enjoy a clean and healthful environment. 
we have a right to to not be polluted or poisoned or um, become ill as a consequence of the behaviour of a company or of the government so we have a we have a right to enjoy the environment and the environment should be suitable for our enjoyment but we live on the planet we we share the planet with other human beings one group of human beings do not have a right to damage the environment and to cause illness amongst another group that's not fair there's a right of the poor and other minorities to have their interests protected it's it's not fair to wield economic power against a group of people who can't defend themselves it's not right to to make the poor suffer as a consequence of companies getting rich there is something wrong with that perspective there is something wrong with companies behaving in this way or governments behaving in this way the right to safety well the right to safety is consumers have a right to be protected against products and services that are hazardous, hazardous to health and life um, it's particularly important if the products it's not obvious that the products are dangerous so products should be tested and analyzed and if they are hazardous then that should be made public consumers should be aware that the product is dangerous now there's an issue of costs versus benefits deontological irrespective of the costs if life is endangered those costs should be incurred so if if life is endangered then there is an imperative for the company to uh, spend whatever is required to fix that problem for example when uh, large container ships break down at sea or um, oil containers break down at sea and pour oil into into the seas then wildlife is, is affected people's livelihoods are also affected and it's argued that it's right that the company who caused this problem should pay for the clean up and that's an argument that's based on on ethics it's based on, on if you like the theory of eth ethics there's a, a theological or argument also that says that by incurring additional costs lower income consumers get priced out of the market and is that desirable so sometimes if companies uh, have to behave in a very uh, squeaky clean manner if the companies have to act in a way that they tidy up after themselves and they produce products which are safe and good quality and they clean the environment afterwards they're high cost companies and if they're high cost companies the products will be highly priced if the products are highly priced then poor people can't afford them Now, there's a conflict there the conflict is should the company cut corners and not so be not so uh, strict about its standards reduce its costs and produce a product which you can sell cheaper so that poor people can have access to the product it's a big question it's a big area for debate and it's not easily answered it's worth considering the right to be informed well 
the consumer has the right to be protected against fraudulent, deceitful or grossly misleading information, advertising, labelling or other practices and to be given the facts that he or she needs to make an informed decision. So it's, it's right that the consumer be informed. The, the consumer has to make a decision. The consumer has got limited resources. The consumer has limited resources like all situations in economics. Scarcity is a problem. So the, the consumer has limited income perhaps. Therefore the consumer wants to maximize, get the most they can out of their limited income. And the only way they can get that is if they have good information to make good decisions. So they have a right to be informed. Consumers have the right to uh, assured access to a variety of products and services at competitive prices. By and large, consumers should have access to uh, various products similar products so that they can choose between them. That's the nature of competition. Competition is the essence of capitalism. It's not always the case that consumers have that access. Sometimes companies have monopolies and they produce a single product. Now is it right that that should happen or should the the companies be forced to produce alternatives? These are big ethical questions. Perhaps if the company is forced to produce alternatives the cost of the company will increase and although it's a monopoly it may go out of business so the consumers don't have any product to choose from. Big questions. In those industries in which competition is not workable, government regulation is substituted to assure unsatisfactory quality and service at fair prices. So, so it, it, it's trying to uh, substitute unsatisfactory quality and it's also trying to provide services at fair prices. So it's trying to get rid of the unsatisfactory quality. Um, but as I said, there's an issue. If the company, let's say there's only one company producing the product and the consumers need the product, they don't have a choice to just buy that one product. That product may be expensive because it's a monopoly. If the government forces the company to produce a range of products, then the company, uh, company costs increase so that the, the price on the market for the products increase and the consumers will have to pay higher prices. Or it could be that the costs of the company increase and the company goes out of business so there's no choice whatever for the consumer as I mentioned earlier. Consumers have the right uh, to be assured that consumer interests will receive full and sympathetic consideration in the formulation of government policy and fair and expeditious treatment in its administrative tribunals. So customers have a right to uh, sympathetic consideration. Their, their requirements should be considered when the government is looking at changing a policy or implementing a policy. And where there is an unfairness the customers or the consumers or the citizens if you like have a right to go back in a tribunal or in some sort of hearing and make a case that the policy is not working as it should, it should be tweaked in certain ways, it should be changed in certain ways. So the the customer or the citizen or whoever it is has a right to go back to be heard and
to explain what the issue is and what's wrong with the policy. They have a right to a clean and healthy environment. There are environmental issues. I mentioned earlier uh, ships at sea who uh, accidentally perhaps tip oil into the into the seas and destroy wildlife. Perhaps it was accidental or perhaps that the company was negligent in not having the right equipment in the first place. But there are environmental issues all the time and um, as long as humans produce products that we we consider are essential for us to to have good quality life when the process of making those products almost inevitably has an impact on the environment through greenhouse gases or through uh, road congestions or uh, noise pollution or light pollution or whatever it is there are invariably environmental issues in the production process. And there are pollution issues that when when companies produce products they produce wastes and the wastes have to be disposed of. These are pollution. They may seep into the water table, pollute the water supply, they may they may leak into the into the seas or into the rivers, kill off the fish and uh, destroy the environment. The, there are also the rights of the, the poor and special interest groups. The rich are not the only people who live on the planet. There are many people who are not rich that live on the planet. Which may come as a surprise to some people I suppose. But the poor have rights. And as have special interest groups. Children have rights. They have a right to assume that the toys that they, they play with are not dangerous. Uh, they, have a, they have a right to assume that the medication that they're given when they're ill will make them better, not make them, make them worse. Elderly people have, have rights. Uh, they may not be able to get around as easily as other people. It doesn't mean they should be trapped in their homes and, and starved to death. Elderly people have rights. They, they should be supported. There's an ethical issue here. The, the society and the people within the society have, um, have some obligation towards helping the elderly. And there are many people below the poverty line who also need support and direction and as to whether the market does this or not is an issue. But simply because people are poor doesn't mean they should be ignored. Perhaps they should be helped uh, in a way that will enable them to acquire the skills and the, the talents that many of them obviously have as people and they can use those skills to to support themselves in the future. Dealing with consumer rights, well first of all it's taking responsibility for the consumer rights. Um, somebody must take responsibility, somebody must enforce the consumer rights. It may be an agency of the government that's appointed to look after consumer interests but somebody must take responsibility. To say that the consumers have rights and they are not enforced is a meaningless statement. Having consumer rights means someone takes responsibility to enforce the consumer rights. But there should also be improving the, the quality of customer contact. Customers should have a, a means of feeding comments and requests and ideas back into the system, back into the production system, back into companies, back into the government about the services they receive and the products that they purchase so that 
there's a feedback which will help the companies and will help the government to refine what they do and give a better service. There is also providing for redress. When customers are hurt as a consequence of a faulty product or hurt as a consequence of a bad policy that's been made and promoted by the government, then the individual should be able to go to courts and seek redress, seek compensation. They've been hurt. So they should be put back into the original position, the position that they found themselves in before they were hurt, before they were damaged by the product or by the particular aspect of government that they're complaining about. So they have a right to go back to seek redress. And they should be educated about their rights. They should be educated about um, what they can legitimately expect and what can happen if they are hurt or damaged or uh, if, if they incur pain and distress as a consequence of someone else's actions, what can they do about it? So they should be educated to know their rights, they should be educated to know the procedures that need to be followed to seek redress, to seek compensation in the event that they are hurt or experience discomfort or pain or poor value for money or whatever it is as a consequence of the behaviour of uh, companies or government agencies or local government agencies who are acting perhaps not with the interest of the, cons of the customer at heart. It's a long topic this one. Uh, it's got many aspects to it. Uh, many of the ideas that we deal with are important because it's the customer who has the experiences of the product or the services and it's the customer who ultimately judges whether it's good value or not. And these are ethical considerations that need to be taken into account when assessing whether a product is good or not so good. That's all we're going to do on this topic for the moment. As I said, it's quite a big topic and it's worth researching it elsewhere, um, going across the internet and looking up some other ideas associated with consumerism and with ethical responsibility. But for the moment, that's all we're going to do here, so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.